Hey everyone, so I just put up a video earlier today asking what would you like guys like me to post about and I had a, a comment from Impulse Scares saying, hey George, I'm a new, sub new subscriber, it was, it was your video on starting a small business that led me to you, could you please do another video on something like that? And then I said, what specifically would you like? And they said, more specifically on a small home-based business, which is perfect because that's what I've got. I'm at my home right now. Um, from legal requirements to sorting postage, any information or tips on how to plan a business and where to start it would to make a reality would be super. Okay, so <clears throat> starting a business from home or an office is, I'm guessing, pretty similar because it's just a space where you can use internet, you've got PowerPoints. Um, however, if you've got a family and stuff, it might be a bit harder. You've got to kind of free up a bit of space or have a, a, an area where you don't get distracted. Um, that's super important. Um, I lived previously with other housemates and you know they were really good. They were at work most of the time and if I really needed to concentrate, I would move my laptop into a different room. Um, but it's super important to be, have a space that is where you are not going to get distracted, where you can shut the door, you can't hear anything else happening, no TVs going, no kids running in, all that kind of stuff. You want to focus your mind on what you're doing and not get distracted. Um, yeah, legal requirements, you do need to register your business with ASIC, I believe it is. Um, just search, people call it ASIC, um, asic.vic.gov.au. You can go on there. If you don't have an account, create an account on there and search for the business name that you would like um, and see if it's available. Apply for that. You're also going to need an Australian business number, an ABN. Um, there's, you can either set up as a sole trader, a partnership, or a company. Um, if you're a solo uh, business owner and you're not doing it with a friend or a family member, then a great place to start is a sole trader. If you are wanting to go into it in a partnership, then go as a, yeah, a partnership. And if you're a company that is turning over a lot of money, I suggest doing a company, um, but Advise your accountant on that one, whether you're ready. There's different tax benefits and a structure where you have to actually do a company tax return and then do a personal one as well. But um, if you're just starting out, the best thing to do is sole trade or partnership. Um, in a partnership, one thing you really want to do before going into a partnership is define the roles within that partnership. Um, I've gone into two part, no, three partnerships now, which were fucking complete disasters because we didn't actually define what our roles were gonna be at the start. And it's all you know exciting and that at the start, but then once you get into it, one person's putting in more work than the other one, or one person's more passionate than the other person, and it, it just becomes a mess. Um, it's my fault that I didn't do that. I'm not blaming it on the other person. I should have just known better, and it was a massive learning curve for me. Um, but make sure you just write, like, ask yourself these questions, like why are you going into a partnership with that person? What skills are they bringing that you don't have? Um, how are they, how are they going to benefit doing jobs that you can't do? Um, cause you don't want to, ultimately you don't want to go into a partnership with someone with the same skill set as you, because then you'll be clashing a lot. And also there will be areas, um, like say like admin and finance or sales or marketing or wh whoever's more creative or just try and pick someone that is a bit of a opposite to you in a lot of things that's they're good at. And um, yeah, it works out well that way because then say one person can focus on the creative um, innovation development side of like the product, whereas the other person might focus on um, sales and, uh, you know, admin stuff or that's just an example. Or say for my uncle's company, for example, he uh, had, was, did a furniture company and he was in charge of, you know, sales and... Um, all of that kind of stuff. And his business partner was in charge of manufacturing the product. So that worked out well for him because he managed the shop, the other guy managed the production and yeah, they went clashing. But anyway, <laughs> that's what you want to consider if you're in a partnership. If not, then just forget that. Moving along. Um, <clears throat> so you need an Australian business number. So that 
you need that so when you send out an invoice or when you send out a bill to your customer for the work that you've done, if that's the way you operate, depending on what your company does, like if you're selling little products and stuff, you might have to have it on a receipt. Um, but for me, for example, I do video and photo editing and production. So when I send out an invoice, my ABN's on there with my registered business name. And when I do my tax return, it all goes under that. So you have to actually legally register that. I think it's about 35 bucks for the year. You can register for one to three years. I recently just registered a new business name the other day, Panda X Media, because somebody trademarked my other business name, X Panda Media, which really sucks. Um, but yeah, I guess they just got to it first. So when you register a business name, that that is just registering the business name. There's another thing called a trademark. The trademark is like higher than a business name. If, if you have a, I can, someone can actually, like I haven't trademarked this yet. Someone can go and trademark Panda X Media right now and then I'll have to stop using it. So soon I'm gonna apply for that. Um, but a trademark trumps all. So you find that most major big brands are trademarked. And anyway, I registered Expander and someone else registered Expander Media. And I got expandermedia.com.au and they trademarked Expander Media. Then I got a letter saying, hey, you cannot use this anymore. It's our trademark. You're out of here. So I'm like, fuck, what do I do? So I've gone for Panda X Media. This sounds way different to me. It starts with a P, it's got an X. I just wanted to keep the same logo because I fucking love that thing. Anyway, so... <clears throat> If you want to go down the road of trademarking it, so that means you're safe and secure, it's a, it's a good thing to do as well because um, at least then your brand, like I spent so many, so much time putting my logo on the end of videos and you know, network, people have heard my name before, now I've got to change it and it's like all this work and money gone. So it's one thing to consider if you're serious, really, really serious about what you're gonna do is trademark the name. <clears throat> All right, so once you've got your business name set up and registered, then it is time to set up a Facebook page, Instagram, website. One massive thing when businesses are starting out is they fail to get maximum attention. And it is so important for maximum amount of people to know about your product and service because a lot of business start out with you know, a few cards and the old school way to do it was you get some business cards, you put your ad in the paper, and then you know you, you wait for the phone to the ring, you, t you tell your friends and family, and eventually word of mouth spreads it. Now, a lot of businesses are still currently operating this way, but I'm telling you, it's so much more efficient to actually get your business on a phone. Set up a Facebook page, is free. Um, set up an Instagram, that's free as well. A website's gonna cost you a bit of money. If you need help with a website, send me a message. We, I actually do websites and you know, we can set you up with that. Um, we get them online within a week. Uh, I forgot all the information and stuff like that. And there's really cool things you can do with websites where you can link them to your Facebook page. And if people click on your Facebook like posts or ads, then it, it tracks them and sends them to your website. And Basically, Facebook is just like the place where there's maximum traffic. Like I'm pretty sure there's, oh, I can't remember off by heart, but it's gotta be nearly a billion users for sure. There's 7 billion people on the planet and I'm guessing, hang on, I'm gonna look it up. There's so many people on Facebook, it's insane. So Facebook is like major for traffic. Um, there's so many people there, it's good to be there because you know, that's where everyone is. Like between every ad break on TV, they're picking up their phone and they're like checking out Facebook. How many people on? Okay, so seven and a half billion people on the planet, people on Facebook. See what it comes up with. More than one billion people are active on Facebook and more than a hundred million people use Instagram every month. Yeah, more than a hundred people use Facebook on their phone every month, which is crazy. Um, 
and that's a growing number as well. So say if you're selling custom birthday cakes, right? What you can actually do on Facebook is post on there and actually target ads to people who have other birthdays within that month or kids with birthdays that month. There's like so many different variables on ads you can send and it's a lot cheaper and more efficient than actually going out and like putting a ad paper, uh, an ad in the paper or an ad on the radio or ad on the TV. Like the great thing about Facebook is you're going to be people who actually want to see your stuff are going to see your stuff. And if they don't want to see it, they'll just either not comment on it. And then Facebook's algorithm is going to, you know, stop showing your post to them. And if they're not going to buy off you, then who cares? You only really want the people who are going to buy your shit to see your shit. So that's super important. <clears throat> Um, you also want to do a logo if you haven't already for your business. Um, that's something I can help you out with as well. So if you need a logo of any sort, I can have it done within a couple of days. Whatever you're thinking, just send it. Send me through what you're thinking. Uh, we've done a few logos before. I'll chuck them in here. Equine Effect logo. Um, that's my logo. Expander Media. We've also done... I can't think of it off the top of my head. I've got the B Magic. Um, listing magnet yeah and yeah we do those for 250 bucks so if you want one of them done within two days um, and, we, and, we, and we, there's a back and forth thing where we refine it and you, we wait till you're happy and we show you all these different examples but yeah if you need a logo 250 Australian done um, <clears throat> which is yeah it's super important to have a nice logo because people remember you from that. It's gonna be on your card, it's gonna be on your website. Um, you know, it's a bit of work involved to just get it right and get it refined and get it looking good so everyone's happy. But yeah, it's definitely worth it and it's fully tax deductible. So the good thing about having ABN as well, or like running your business is, make sure you keep receipts for everything that you buy. Like say if you get a video done or if you get a logo done or if you buy stationery or you buy any stuff like this, make sure you keep all the receipts. and. and because when it comes to tax time or whatever money you've made, you can actually minus that off your income, which reduces your taxable income. So say for example, I make $100,000 and then I spend $50,000 on stuff to make that $100,000, then that comes off your taxable income. That means your taxable income is only 50,000. Do you understand? But if you didn't keep the receipts, then they'll be like, okay, well prove it, you know? You gotta have receipts, which is super important. Um, going back to the Facebook thing, if you really wanna maximize your <clears throat> potential on Facebook and attention, what you need to do is reverse engineer what you'd wanna see as a customer. So for example, if you sell the birthday cakes, or should I use a different example? For example, you are a, say you sell, you're, you, I was working with a Ford dealer recently. They sell Ford Rangers and all these different kinds of Fords, right? <clears throat> if I was to want people to buy a Ford Ranger, what I'd have to do is think about, okay, I'm a guy, I want a Ford Ranger, I'm a guy who's into four wheel driving, possibly camping, possibly, um, what else would I be into? Just a lot of guys are into that kind of stuff. Like you might be a tradie, you wouldn't need to take your, your tools and stuff to work. So what you can actually do is send and put an ad up on Facebook or, or you do posts that would get the attention of that person. And you need to think user first. Like don't think, don't think about what you would like to see as a post. Think about like what can people get value out of or entertainment. Don't be posting about like, check out my cool thing that I made. Because people don't care. Like you, th you care because you invested so much time in it and effort and you think it's cool. But other people don't have that much time. They're, you know, they have, they've got their own shit to worry about. Some people will care, but most people only really care about what value is in it for them. Just like this. You know, if I was sitting here pitching to you about Oh, hey, you know, my, uh, so yeah, I did this for me and my, 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 I, 
you're just gonna lose interest. I need to talk about you, 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 you. What do you need to do? How do you make more money? How do you, um, you know, get this Facebook page set up so you can actually reach the people that you need to reach? So you wanna be thinking about user first. What do the users wanna see? Pay attention to Facebook and Instagram when you're scrolling, what catches your eye? It's always, it's called a pattern interrupt. Like things that you see that capture your attention, it interrupts your pattern. You're like, oh, what's that? And you wanna see further. So think about stuff that's a little bit edgy. Maybe it's very colorful, maybe it's cute. Maybe it's offering, um, you know, a cheap deal on something. And that's gonna help you get more engagement. But post relevant stuff, daily, every single day you want to post um, about, you know, your products and services, but add value, don't try and take. Um, Jim Ron says in one of his speeches, show your seed, not your need. So don't just show the benefits of it. So if you're going to do like the Ranger, you might be like, perfect for long drive, like perfect for off-roading. Like take that camping trip now and then like put the Ranger there and have like a, a link to like test drive now or learn more and then it sends you to your website where it says book in a test drive and it gives you more information or say for a birthday cake salesperson you might have um, you know save three hours save three hours cooking and buy this cake now so there it's offering value like save time or you know custom order cake or something that gives the viewer value. <clears throat> if I post and say, look at my new shirt, like very minimal people will care about that. But if I say I'm giving away a free something, then everyone's gonna be like, yeah, click. Cause it's, you know, it's just the way people are. Anyway, Instagram, same thing, daily content, make sure you use your hashtags, 30 different hashtags on your post, go more in depth in, with that if you want to. Just comment here. There's a lot of things to go through, but yeah, I suggest Facebook page set up, ABN set up, um, your business name registered. You want a website because a website allows you to track who's hitting on your ads. Plus, you've got the control of the person. So you can either have a, a store where people buy off that store, which I can set up as well if you need a website or anything. Hit me up in the comments. We do online stores, even just basic um, pages that show like contact us now with contact forms. So you can, you know, show a video or show your products and say, contact us now, bang. And that, you know, the money you spend on that is minimal compared to what you can make off it. It's, it's, it's insane. Like, you know, store might cost, cost you a couple of thousand, but in the long run, that, that store's yours forever. You, you're going to be uploading and putting products on there all the time and sending it out to people and customers and it's so convenient for them to just be like click now um you can sell your stuff on ebay like that but the the fees end up killing you like if you didn't use ebay you could just buy a store with the fees that they charge you <laughs> but yeah anyway so to wrap it up um you got your abn you need to set up your business name your website no, your logo first, your website, your Facebook page, your Instagram page. They're the main things. Then you need to create content based around your product or create your product first. Once you've got your product down, like write it all down in a book. Then try and think of what the, is the user gonna wanna hear about this. Like for me, I do real estate photography. So I'm gonna talk about how my real estate photography stands out from someone else's. How is it unique compared to a different product? Um, you want to portray that all in your websites and your posts. So, yeah, guys, um, I hope you got something out of this. It wasn't really planned. I kind of just ranted on for ages, and I hope you got something out of this. If you want to see more about anything else, just comment below, and, yeah, I'll do my best to, yeah, do a video on that. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time. I'm